am, as a matter of fact, Eric. Ah. I would be if it wasn't for my money you were dishing out. Employees have to be paid. <sighs> yeah. It's all payout at the moment. New stock to buy in, wages. At least we were able to downsize there, letting Zeth go. Yeah. I don't know why I let him in. Just think, though, when we deliver our first order next week. Yeah. Do you know, Gloria, you're a great asset. Oh, any clerical assistant could do this. No, no, I mean, to me, personally. Good to have around. Am I? Hmm. Sorting out something nice for our honeymoon, are you? Mm -hmm. Haven't gone cold on the idea. No, 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 of course not. Be a proper honeymoon, just you, me, and somewhere romantic. It's always romantic when I'm with you. No. <laughs> so where are you going to take me, then? I haven't thought. I've got to get this sorted to go out tomorrow. You do want to do it, though? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. I can't wait. I'm straining at the leash. Oh, me too. Tell you what, I know you're under a lot of pressure, so... Yeah, so if we can just leave it for a bit. No need. I'll organise it. Take the weight off your shoulders. Tell you what, I'll nip out later and get some brochures. Can you manage? Well, just watch me. The world is our oyster. Oysters don't come cheap. And neither do we. We deserve the best. The best doesn't come cheap either. Terry could do that. I want to do it for Joseph. Well, probably as well. He'd cough his lungs up if he tried. I want this to be Joseph's best party ever. Yeah. Before he went to school, he said he wished his mum could be here. Well, at least he knows there are people around who love him. Is Charity coming? Well, she's hardly the sort of person you'd like to introduce to Joseph's friend's parents. I'm not a snob. Anyway, it's for Joseph. I'm sure he'd love her to be here. He's not the only one. I'll ask her then. Thanks. Have another go at him. If you'd known Eric Pollard as long as I have, you'd know I'd be wasting my time. Yeah, well, I've got plenty to spare. So we noticed. Hot air, it's cold. It weren't right the way they just sat, Seth. Oi, Eric! I leave it, love. It's Mr. Pollard to you. You've been called a lot of things in your time, haven't you, Mr. Pollard? Hey, I'm not surprised if the way you treated Seth is anything to go by. Hey, and he won't be the last one to get his marching orders either. Did you hear him threatening me? Yeah. That's harassment. Good morning, everyone. Here's what you've all been waiting for. Pay up. Sam. You've made a mistake, Mrs. Weavy. Oh, I don't think so. Deduction's £83? That's right. It'll be tax. It's about time he paid in. But I thought we'd been paid cash, no tax or insurance. That's right. We leave paying tax to your own conscience. Well, then, what are these deductions for? For all the goods he damaged by inscribing an obscenity on them. It was a mistake. Mm, very costly one. You better give me another spray. Not to guess. I'd say you were having a problem with unwelcome orders. Oh, quick, aren't you? I blame those mucky beggars at the pub. Well, a wool pack always seems very clean to me. Yeah, well, that depends on what you're used to. £8.60, please. I dread to think what goes down there, plumbing. And, of course, I'm the unfortunate person that has to share a sewer with them. It smells like the inside of a fish port as welly on a hot day. All right, Emily. Carol was just telling me about her hygiene problems. Oh, I always say you can't beat soap and water. I mean the B&B &B as well, you know. Well, I never noticed anything when I viewed it before you gazumped me. In fact, the smell only arrived when you did. Me and Bob won't be staying in our whiffy little boarding house. It's taking me on honeymoon. <laughs> of course, I went to Barbados on my honeymoon. I oh, know, you never stopped going on about it. Five-star beach resort club. <laughs> of course, a bit too exclusive for some. Take your own air freshener with you. It's a very good incentive. If he takes good care, he'll be amply rewarded. That does seem a fair point. I am talking to the organ grinder. Being offensive to the management team will not help. 
I think I've given Sam more job opportunities than anyone around. Only because you can tweet. Yes. If he thinks he's being treated unfairly, he can look elsewhere. You were very patient in the face of such ingratitude, Eric. He's not having any of it. You're not surprised, are you? I've told you, there's nothing we can do about it. Oh, isn't there? Get your coats. Where are you going? Not just me, all of us. We're going on strike. Come on! Well, I'm definitely not going on strike. Oh, no, why doesn't that surprise me? What about you lot? I've only just started working here. Yeah, well, so is she, and she's a right troublemaker. Look, they've given you a Seth bullet. They've robbed wages off, Sam. Who's going to be next? Well, it's definitely not right what they're doing. No, well, Pollard's never done anything right in his whole life. Well, then, maybe it's time we taught him a lesson. What do you reckon, Betty? Yes, why not? I might as well leave with my self-respect, if not else. Come on, Sammy. I want Mr Pollard be upset. We are busy luck, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Happy in your work? Found anything? <sighs> Nothing you wouldn't expect to find in a sewer. Well, listen up, you're making me want to choke. Oh, poor you. I'll tell you what, mind. This train smells sweeter than the dining room in the B&B. &B. It's driving cattle nuts. Oh, it doesn't say much. Hey, watch it, you. I usually end up at the end of this stick. <laughs> Aye, me and all. Hey, Viv wants me to take her on honeymoon. Oh, lucky you. Where are you going? I've let her choose. You what? Well, why not? We're equal partners. Well, maybe, but... Well, as long as you put an upper limit on it. Oh, I didn't think of that. <laughs> Looks like you're going to get the mucky end of the stick again. I know. Firm management. But fair. Yes, of course. Fair, but most of all, strong. That's how one earns respect. Would you mind knocking? We're having a management meeting. Well, you'd better have it at the workbench, then, while you're painting pots. What are you talking about, Edna? They reckon they've gone on strike. What do you mean, they reckon? All right, they have, then, all of them. They've downed tools, walked out. Of course, I wouldn't hold the country to ransom. <sighs> I've worked in these sweatshops before in Bradford. We've got to stick together, else they'll pick us off. First Seth, then Sam. Yeah. I know. Let's all go in ours. I'll make us all a nice brew. Yeah, I need toilet or not. I'll just nip home and make my Seth a nice lunch. No one's going anywhere. It's a picket line. Is it? Nothing comes in or goes out. Mm -hmm. Now, what are you playing at? It's a picket line. Get the troops in, Mr Pollard. Shut it, scab! I don't know where that came from. Now, I'll give you all one chance. You can go back to work and I'll say no more. And of course, I'll have to deduct 30 minutes from it. Not until our demands are met. The reinstatement of Seth and the reimbursement of Sam. And another thing... Oh, blow this for a lark. You're all sacked. Thank you and good riddance. <laughs> Well, that took the wind out of their sails. Talk about biting the hand that feeds. Did you see their faces? <laughs> you were very decisive, Eric. Well, that's the way to be, with an iron fist. It does just leave us with one small problem, though. Yeah? How are we going to complete the order? Oh, my God. I'm going to be bankrupt. Everything's tied up in this. Now, be strong, Eric. Strong and destitute. And humiliated. I think there is a solution. But in strike breakers, I suppose. It's rather draconian. The more draconian, the better. We don't want to cut off our noses despite our faces. Could cut off their noses. Just relax. At a time like this? Relax. Now that's better. 
Oh, that loud. Oh. I can't sit here while Rome's burning. No. This is what we are going to do. You're quiet. You're right. Maybe it's the quiet before the storm. What storm? It's always only decided to blab about me and her. Not Chris. Not yet, no. Paddy. Oh, Paddy won't spread it around. Supposing she wants him to. Might be part of the buzz she's getting from seeing me. You know, living dangerously and all that. She's not much different from you then, is she? Excuse me, uh, Chloe, chop, chop, table three, a bottle of wine. Oh, it's like I've got two bosses now. I know how you feel. Good girl, Chloe. Lots of potential. That's why I appointed her. Got to work on the ethos of service, though. What do you think I've been doing for the last six months? Had a guess, worrying about non-business considerations. Oh, what? Details like my partner skipping the light fantastic? Precisely. But don't worry, I think we can retrieve it. Is that we or I? <laughs> Thought I'd find you here. Could have found me. Zoe sent me out to get some paper plates for Joseph's party and to invite you. Well, it's hardly my scene, is it? Oh, you've got to go. Zoe's in bossy organising mode. She insists I ask you. Give over. She does. Why would she do that? For Joseph, why else? About half four, okay? I'll see you. So, what did you want? Invite me to Joseph's birthday party. We're not going. How can you turn up and pretend nothing's going on? Don't know. Well, we can't hang round here forever. I know, I could be getting tea on. We can't skulk off as if it's us that were it wrong. I, I bet Mr Pollard has given us his jobs back if we asked him nicely. You what? He sacked me loads of times and took us back on. He's been dead good to me. He's not been good to you, Sam. He's twisted you left, right and centre. I know, but, but he's still been good to me, though. <sighs> Mr Pollard has an announcement to make. Hey, old Peric's about to read the riot act. I'm not grabbing to this rabble. There has obviously been a breakdown in communication leading to some misunderstanding. Who's working out? Tell them what you propose, Eric. Oh, for heaven's sake. I agree to review Mr Armstrong's suspension. Suspension? Does that mean he's got his job back? Mr Pollard is reviewing it. And what does that mean? Move on, Eric. I further agree to allow Sam Dingle to reimburse me of any stock he damaged at an agreed amount per week. This generous offer is to relieve any hardship he may suffer. Thanks, Mr Pollard. I told you you were good to me. Is that it? If, and I stress if, the contract is completed by Monday, I will make a bonus payment. You? A bonus? How much? Take it, I'll leave it. We may as well. well. How do we know we can trust him? It's Hobson's choice, and I can't afford to stay around here all day doing nought. Me neither. Can we go back in then? Now we can all be one big happy family with a common goal. What? Earning him a small fortune? Well, you decided to go in then? Well, why not? I can think of two good reasons. Yeah, but neither of them are going to do anything to ruin the little lad's party, are they? Nothing that lot do would surprise me. Are we cancelling? Oh, don't blame you. Oh yeah, it's me. What's your game? Musical chairs, blind man's buff, hunt the thimble. <sighs> Miss Tinkle, that's not a very ladylike thing to say. Look. Just tell me why you want me to come. It's obvious. No, it's not obvious. Hello, Chris. Just talking to Charity. She's not crying off. Well, I've told her we desperately wanted to come. And is she? Are you? <sighs> so? You know what we should do? What should we do? Cater for punters who just want a drink. 
The licence covers it. Eric tried it. And? Apart from him losing his licence, <clears throat> it took off like a lead balloon. Yeah, that was just him. Rubbish wine at Top Whack. Now, if I were to supply some really good wine, still at Top Whack, of course. Of course. I reckon we could fill this place in the afternoons and early evenings. Businessmen, tourists, now things are getting better. And then the younger set in the evenings. I don't want to run a pub. We won't be running anything if we don't improve our turnover. We're closed. This is business. Do you want me to fix you up with some decent wine? I want you to explain yourself. Watch out, mate. I think we're in for a flat jacket job. Look at you. Sat there like a dunno what. Mine host. I might have guessed this is what you'll be up to. What kind of father goes into competition with his own daughters? And you. How low can you get? Have you finished? No. You didn't even have the guts to tell us. I thought you might misunderstand my motives. You've got one motive. Look after number one and beggar the rest. Yeah, only partly true. Yes, I do need to earn a living. At our expense. And secondly, I wanted to help this poor lad get back on his feet. Not a basket case. So, when he came to me to ask me for my input, I didn't like to refuse him. I bet you didn't. I hope you know what you're getting into with him. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> so he said you'd come? Oh, did she? Hey, they look like they're having a ball. But you never thought she was a party person? I never really thought about it. Well, you know what it is, of course. She feels safe with kids and animals. That's why her relationships never last. <laughs> What's your excuse? <laughs> <laughs> having a good time, Joseph? Will you play charity? Yeah. Yeah, of course, course I will. What it's like to be popular, eh? <laughs> right, where are you? <laughs> when did you last have your drain seen to? I beg your pardon? There's a terrible smell wafting around the B&B. You're not implying that it's coming from here? Well, it's coming from somewhere. Don't start on me. I'm not in the mood. I've already told my ex his fortune and I'll happily do the same for you. What's up? Well, I only mentioned our sanitary problem. He's just used the gents. Any complaints, Terry? No. No smell as fresh as a spring day. Better than the dining room next door, then? Definitely. Any luck with the drains, Terry? No. Can we talk about something else? Every time I see Carol, it's the same topic of conversation, and I'm too much of a lady to say what that is. Of course, if you can't get rid of the smell, you could promote it as a unique feature. An unforgettable place that will stay with you forever. <laughs> How's the honeymoon planning going? Great, we've got the brochures. Oh, well, it doesn't cost anything just to look. Meaning? Nothing. What did you think of Barbados? All right. Barbados. Mm. I recommended it very highly. Another world. Of course, you have to cut your cloth, but there's nothing wrong with that. That's where we're going. Uh, usual, Diane. Barbados. Honest? Yeah. Long way to go for a week. Yeah, I know. That's where we're going for three. Three weeks in Barbados? I can't believe it! <laughs> Neither can I. There's no need to do that. It's OK. It won't take long. I was dreading today. Oh, come on. They were hardly going to riot, were they? Not that. It's a kind of landmark. When his mother died, I wondered how it was going to affect his future. Oh, just a smashing little lad. He's doing great. He is, isn't he? It's been a good day. Mm. Joseph wants a story. Right. Thank you. <laughs> so he did all the work. What would I do without you both? Look, Zoe. Why do you want me to come here? I don't know. Oh, come off it. For this, I think. Uh, 
I've got that Cynthia's card marked. I know. <laughs> what a dreadful woman. <laughs> Still, she's a good worker. Yes, when she's not stirring up trouble. You won, Eric. Yeah. So long as I don't think I'm a soft touch. I don't think that's likely. <laughs> no, especially with you behind me. What a team, eh? Yes, we are, aren't we? Hmm. Hmm. You don't know how grateful I am to you, Eric. My life's turned around. Less than three months ago, I couldn't see any future. I had no confidence. No real purpose, I suppose. Well, no. Anything's possible. Is it? I don't know how to show my appreciation. Don't you? Do you? I haven't thought about it, really. I think you have. I've not thought about anything but you and I lately. Nor me. Haven't you? I've not felt this close to someone since... I don't know. Thank you, Eric. Thank you.